What's going on here? As but I had no choice. I am responsible for the safety of the temple. Allow me to do my duty, Eliandra. Please, my righteous companions, now is not the time for dissension. You hear the distant sounds of a conversation. Eliandra and Katera appear to be having an intense discussion. Their voices are not raised, but you can feel the tension between them, like a uh, gathering storm that could break at any moment. I have already apologized for using my powers as the high priestess to pr pressure you like I did if I had no I had to inter intervene. It would have brought harm to those poor, miserable people. I can read the souls of others, and when I looked at them, I saw no evil, only fear and grief. Enough, priestess. I don't mind you giving me a tongue lash, and you could scold me as much as you want. I won't be offended, but do not expect me to forget about my duty. I am responsible for the safety of this temple, and the safety and that safety is threatened by those cultists. We need to interrogate them, and if necessary, torture them until they reveal the truth of how they came to be here. Was it by chance or by choice? Even if it's the former, uh, letting them go is out of the question. They may not have an any evil intentions, but they still cannot be trusted. If they prove their innocence, they will remain here as prisoners. <clears throat> I, my righteous friends, your words are an endless circle. You have gone around and around, but you are no closer to making a decision. Enough arguing, Eliandra is right. The cultists wish to atone for their crimes, and we must support them on their path to redemption. We must not torture them. Fine, I'll go make sure our cultist friends get a feast and soft uh, feather beds. Discord among allies, such a thing weighs on and weighs on me heavily. Somebody help. It's the uh, cultist. Mm, the one who didn't uh, want to give his name. He started shaking, whispering something, and then this haze surrounded him. All the guards around him lost consciousness, and he got up and started walking toward the temple entrance. He was leaving. We don't know what to do. We need to go there once. Make haste. Uh, Polito prote uh, protect us. Let us go there quickly. Oh dear. This is not good. My commands, they didn't do anything. They believe we we're looking for a shelter in Dresden. I deceived them too, and now I will die. I'll become a worm in the abyss. I deserve nothing more. You recognize the moment? So that. Oh my god, this. Oh, oh dear. You recognize the monster that towers over the cultist's body soaked, uh, blood soaked body. You've, you've seen this beast before. It appeared in a vision you had about the death of Lariel when you were in the caves beneath Canabras. The monster looks like Discari, a hideous cross between human and locust. It sways on thin legs as its head's head turns from side to side. However, it does not seem to be uh, frightened or aggressive. On the contrary, it seems strangely calm, as if completely unaffected by its current surroundings. In anticipation of your questions, I will provide you with some answers. Yes, you have fallen into my trap. Even you fell for it, hand of the upstart. It has been many years since I caught your angel in the keys beneath Canabras and allowed him to leave his flaming sword in the stone. 
He promised that sooner or later, someone would remove it. And I decided to believe him. I kept a watch on the sword. I have watched and waited all these years. Waited for the promise to come true. For the sword's new owner to bring me to you. To take me to the secret temple. You protected it well. In fact, the temple is still hidden from my sight. But I do not need to see the temple in order to destroy it. I simply need to know where it is. Eleandra turns pale and there is a feverish light in her eyes. A feverish light in her eyes. The echo of Descari, I presume. Night Commander. That is how one ought to address you, yes. I've been watching you for a long time, and I already know how, when, and where I'm going to kill you. Mortal children like to tear the wings off of flies and butterflies, and I, in turn, like to have my fun with the inheritor's pets. Silence, Echo! You fiend! Do you think I do not see your secret desire? Aerodin overthrew you. He brought his hand down upon you and crushed you like a gnat. Since that day, you have nursed your resentment and jealousy, letting them fester within you. You are too much of a coward for honest combat. You prefer to ambush your prey, striking from the shadows. I will put an end to this. I will put an end to you. And you will take the secret of Pelura's fall with you to your grave. There is so much you do not see, Harold. Suddenly the echo stops, uh, stops short. He's, his head twitches from side to side then falls forward on his chest. His hands hang down limply like a doll. Time seems to slow as he stands there unmoving. The air grows thick and heavy. Then the echo raises his head, turning it from side to side as if assessing his surroundings. As you look into his blank eyes, you realize there's no longer uh, the echo who stares back at you, but someone entirely different. Let's see. The stench of the upper plains in the abyss. Colorful flashes. Magic that deflects the gaze and obscures the vision. It must be Polora, the mistress of bright lights, who has tried to hide her temple in my domain. How could you let such a thing happen, Iomade, the imposter? Don't you feel sorry for your angelic allies? You should have just ordered them to serve their priest up on a platter to me. The end result would be the same. The herald's knuckles are white as he grips the hilt of his sword. However, the angel remains silent. Demon Lord, have you recovered from the defeats I dealt you in Canabras and Dresden? Champion, prepare yourself! So, my Echo has found the Temple of Polura. I wouldn't call it an achievement. But it's not bad for a magnet molded from the souls and bodies of mortals. Hmm. What else? Gold. Light. A sweet smell. It all seems suspiciously like heaven. Well then, Ioma Day the Imposter. Whom have you sent? Could it be your herald? And your new pet from Canabras? Or have I already killed that one? I lose track of such things. There are so many of them fussing about with their halos and wings, babbling their long, arduous prayers to some self-proclaimed goddess. Will you ever get tired of sending your favorites to the slaughter? Nothing to say, imposter. One day I will knock on the doors of heaven and you will have to answer. So remain silent for now, and observe. Today there will be no bloodshed. I will send the Echo back to the Abyss right now. You feel the strange, oppressive presence suddenly disappear. The Echo remains still, frozen as if in a trance. Don't take our secret to the Abyss, you monster! 
Your main flaw is predictability, pawns of heaven. I already know your next move, your methods, your plans of defense. I know how to catch you off guard, and it's as simple as catching a bird in a cage. I will return to the abyss as my lord has ordered, but I am not retreating in defeat. I am carrying off my prey. The screams of your stupid priestess will haunt your every waking moment, and thoughts of her will taunt you in the silence of the night. She will be my entertainment until you are within my grasp. Um, there's one slight problem with this. He can't paralyze, uh... <laughs> uh, he shouldn't be able to paralyze, uh, Amber because she has the boots of freedom of movement. And he took Eliandra. Oh, that's not good. Damn the demons and all their cunning guile. The Echo escaped with a prisoner and I could do nothing to stop it. I was only able to protect you. The Echo of Disguise doesn't want to face me in a fair fight, so he attacks my friends and allies. The Echo of Discari has taken Eliandra. She, she was the heart of Polaris Fall and now that heart has been ripped out. Why is the Echo pursuing you? My lady Iomade inherited the throne of heaven from the great Aradin, the same Aradin who overthrew the Echo and stopped Ascari's last attempt to break through to Galarian. This is why the Echo hates everything and anyone associated with Aradin's legacy. And of course, that legacy includes Iomade. As her herald, I just happen to be first in line. Ascari himself spoke to us. I wouldn't say he spoke to us. He was addressing my celestial lady Iomade. He must have thought she was watching us. This demon lord never wastes, wastes his time communicating with mortals or even with celestials. He barely notices us, or at least pretends not to. Why didn't the Echo fight? That is not easy to explain without delving more deeply into the nature of demons and more specifically the Echo of Discari. And demons are created by the Abyss to have a single purpose. They are made to destroy, desecrate, and torture. But the Echo of Discari is not a real demon. His monstrous creator used his own power and the souls of his uh, mortal followers to make the Echo into what he is today. He was not born in the Abyss, but in Galarian, and Discari wanted to use them to open a way into the world. I have faced this monster before and have defeated it in many battles, but his soul is inf infinitely vile and filled with pride. A pride that has been wounded, the Echo suffered a terrible defeat at the hands of Aridin, and was exiled to the Abyss, vanquished and disgraced. Then, his pride took another blow when a simple human witch, Aurelio of Vorlis, succeeded where he had failed. He opened the way for demonic hordes to enter the mortal world, so if you wish to understand the Echo, you must understand that he is wounded and angry, eager to have revenge for all his grievances and defeats. And that's why it's not enough for him to simply kill his enemies. Even when he can easily overpower them, he wants those who stand against him to suffer and thrash in helpless rage, just as he did. That's why he chose not to fight, and why he did not bring a horde of demons with him, even though he was at <laughs> He has them at his command. No, he wants... Anyways, no, he wants sadness and terror to poison our souls. He wants our hearts to be heavy with grief when we think about the ally he has stolen from us. The Echo wants our minds to be filled with the horrors and tortures of the Abyss, so that when we sleep, the screams of pain and prayers for help come to the nightmares that wake us from our slumber. Damn it, angels, you want me to howl with rage and sadness? Eliandra is in the hands of the monster, and I can't even rush to her rescue, because I know where I, I now bear sole responsibility for our entire community. Now that the demons know the temple, uh, the temple exists, the temple's inhabitants must be brought to Dresden. 
I will speak with everyone and if necessary organize a retreat to safety. However, I can tell you that none of them will wish to flee. If I ask them to save themselves, the answer will be no. We've given too much to this mission. We cannot abandon it now. We must finish it for Polar, for the memory of Sakura's and for the entire world. We will stay in this temple for as long as it takes to finish our work, even if we have to fend off the demons. And besides, even if the demons know the exact location of the temple, Polaris patronage still shields our sanctuary from in their eyes. We will stand our ground. I have faith. What can we do to save the Echo's victim? He went to the abyss of the Asking uh, Rifts, the, dem and dem uh, the dominions of his lord. Even if our hearts wish it, we cannot simply rush after him. Incursions into the abyss are a hundred times more dangerous than anything we've faced before, champion. So dangerous, I would not risk sending you there unless it was absolutely necessary. I will return you to Dresden, and then I will send a message to heaven. If I return to the sources, uh, if, I re if I turn to the sources of wisdom, perhaps I will find something that will help. We must not lose hope, no matter how dire things may seem. And I would ask you, mighty champion, to look for Targona the Angel. She is a light that must shine among the ranks of the Crusaders once more. One day we will finally give the Echo of Discari the Scary what he deserves. Then we'll save everyone who has ever threatened he has ever threatened. But now it's time for us to return to Dresden, champion, and prepare for war. Oh dear. This is an issue. Did you learn anything about what happened to Plura? Not yet. That is not possible, champion. Gotcha. <sighs> That's not particularly good. That's not good at all. Oh, hello. Who are you? <clears throat> Ramian. What good fortune, Commander. I knew the fate would bring us together again, and the timing could not have been better. You see, the after the untimely death of old Helrin, may his soul find its well-deserved rest, the queen named me the new prelate of Canabras, and she recently tasked me with bringing reinforcements to Dresden. A compliment of excellent fighters who are ready to do their fair share to rid the world of demons. I have also brought the Warstone with me. I think the best place for it now is in your hands. How are things? How are things? <laughs> I'm not going to remember this. How are things in Canabras? Quite uncheerful, I'm afraid. Rebuilding, rebuilding work is. Happening apace, but most of the city still lies in ruins. Only a handful of the population have remained in the city. It has turned from a thriving hub into a military garrison, but I still hold out hope that one day that unfortunate city will finally uh, enjoy the peaceful life it has long deserved. The Warstone. What am I supposed to do with it here? You're a living legend, the hope of all humanity. You obliterated the demons, win back, uh, win back long lost territories. You're sure to close the world wound any day now. Where else would the Warstone be if not in your hands? Does Queen Galfrey know that you took the Warstone to Dresden with you? Naturally. It was her idea, in fact. You, you really think I'd decide to remove a precious relic from the, uh, from the city on my own say-so? How did you manage to bring the Warstone here? It's a huge obelisk. What a miracle is the... Uh, what a miracles the gods do work for. Uh, what miracles the god? Uh, what miracles the gods do work for those who are true to them? What miracles the gods do work for those who are what? Uh, I, okay, uh, Queen Galfrey may uh, may her reign continue for centuries hence. Shared with us a prayer that Iambides Herald himself used when building the barrier. Uh, the prayer makes the stone as weightless as a cloud. It rose in the air and floated along behind us. Our march on, from Canavras to Dresden became a rather merry procession. We played music and sang the herald's pr uh, prayer day and night. This benighted land has not seen such uh, gaiety in many years. 
Are you returning to Conobras now? Not a chance. Conobras is insufferably dull these days. Noisy and dusty building work. Uh, marching soldiers, light fingers, light fingered suppliers. No, 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 no. I shall remain here where history is being made, where dreams of freedom from the demon's yoke are at last coming true. It's the army, Raymond. You're supposed to salute. I must admit, <laughs> a person of the spiritual vocation. Nation such as myself has little knowledge of military etiquette, but if you please, uh, but if, uh, but if please you, uh, but if please you to uh, see a salute, how can I refuse such a small request from the person who saved my life and the entire crusade movement? Thank you for reading sportsmen's. Until next time. I understand you're busy. If you find, uh, if you'd like to speak uh, again, I'll be around. Holy crap! Really? <laughs> Well then. Still waiting on this. The fate of the stone of ghostly pathways. Okay. Well then. Actually, you know what? I need to rest badly. Hit the fan now? Oh yeah, it is. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, it's hit the fan. What is with all these funerary daggers? we'll start at the temple maybe he's here maybe there's possibly a little bit to talk about here we go or not or not Is there any other word on Mia Mir? How is her treatment going? As far as I know, it's not going well. She's still muttering nonsense. She doesn't even remember her own name. She and I were never friends, Commander, but I, ad I admired her sharp intellect and her thirst for knowledge. Huh. That's unfortunate. There's Ramian. Uh, 
Okay, so on Hope Swings, Alendra has found the trail of the Angel Targona at a location to the south of Polaris Fall. The commander should hurry there. Will do. Let's first see uh, about... Oh, there's... Oh, it's... Oh, hot. Oh, there's... That must... Okay. Uh, you'll never believe the rumors that are flying around the city. Rumors about you. They're saying you are not only, uh, that you saying you not only dared place a demon in the service of the Crusaders, but that you are one more on more intimate terms than ordinary companions. Let's say it's true. Oh do, oh, do not for a moment think that I am judging you. Some say, and some may doubt the sincerity of her repentance, but I have spoken with her, and I see, but I, with her, and I see in her, I see in her a true sister in faith, one who has furnished us, uh, furnished us with precious information for so long. I wholeheartedly wish for her to see her difficult journey on re, of redemption through to the end. As she has someone beside her who can awaken tender feelings in her heart, perhaps that will make the journey a little easier to bear. How are things in Canabras? Okay, where are we at? Beautiful. <clears throat> Now I gotta see if there's any new uh, conversations with her. Because, uh. Ramian earned my respect. Understanding, dude. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah, very understanding. <laughs> I can't wait to get to level 14 because I. Alright, anyways. Yeah. Great respect. Still nothing to talk about. Anyways, okay, so I, I just need to go and sell. And then we'll head off. <sighs> Excuse me. Show me what you got. Okay. Gleaming banded armor. Huh. Not bad, but. This plus two scale mail gives the attack against its wear a 10% chance of miss due to concealment. Oh. Huh. That's interesting. Okay, let's go. Boop.
desolate hovel. 